I couldn't resist the urge to eavesdrop as Ethan leaned closer to Clarissa, his voice hushed yet intense. The company dinner party swirled around us, the clink of wine glasses and polite laughter masking their intimate exchange. Magnolia is becoming suspicious, Ethan murmured, his eyes darting furtively around the room. I can't keep making excuses. Clarissa's delicate hand rested on his forearm, her ruby lips curled into a reassuring smile. Don't worry, she'll never find out about us. Just a little while longer, and we can be together openly. A knot formed in my throat as the pieces fell into place. The late nights at the office, the unexplained expenses, the sudden distance. It all made sense now. My husband, the man, Nan, I'd loved and trusted for over fifteen years, was having an affair with this much younger woman. As the evening dragged on, I watched helplessly as Ethan hovered near Clarissa, his attention solely focused on her. A bitter taste lingered in my mouth, a mixture of anger and betrayal that threatened to consume me. How could he do this to our family, to our marriage vows? When we finally returned home, the tension was palpable. Ethan sensed my unease, his brow furrowed in concern. Is everything all right, darling? You've been awfully quiet tonight. I wanted to scream, to hurl accusations and unleash the fury brewing inside me. But I held back, swallowing the bitter truth for now. Just a headache. I lied, forcing a weak smile. I think I'll turn in early. As I lay awake that night, staring at the ceiling, a newfound determination took root. I would not be the victim in this story. Ethan had made his choices, and now it was time for him to face the consequences. The game was on, and I intended to play by my own rules. With a heavy heart, I dialed my sister's number, concocting a lie about needing her support during this difficult time. Sarah, ever the nurturing sibling, insisted I come over immediately. Little did she know, her kindness provided me with the perfect cover to follow Ethan. The next morning, I tailed his sleek sedan from a discreet distance, my knuckles white from gripping the steering wheel. My heart pounded as he pulled into the driveway of a quaint suburban home, the kind you'd expect a loving family to reside in. Ethan emerged from the car, his face alight with a joy I hadn't witnessed in years. Before I could process the sight, a squealing child burst through the front door, leaping into his open arms. A wave of nausea washed over me as Clarissa appeared, her radiant smile a mockery of the life I thought we shared. They were the picture-perfect family, the embodiment of everything Ethan had stolen from me. I watched in stunned silence as he showered them with affection, oblivious to my presence just a few houses down. The illusion of our marriage shattered before my eyes, the man I loved reduced to a mere stranger. How long had this charade been going on? How many lies had he spun? How many deceptions had I blindly accepted? Tears stung my eyes, but I blinked them away, refusing to crumble. Not here, not now. I had to be strong, had to think clearly. This was no longer about salvaging our relationship— it was about justice, about making Ethan pay for his betrayal. With trembling hands, I jotted down the address, committing every detail to memory. This was just the beginning, the first step in unraveling the tangled web of deceit Ethan had woven. As I drove back home, a newfound determination coursed through my veins. I would not be the victim, meekly accepting his transgressions. No, I would be the architect of his downfall ensuring he faced the consequences of his actions in the most public, humiliating way possible. Ethan had made his choices, and now it was time for him to reap what he had sown. The next morning, I wasted no time putting my plan into motion. I scoured the Internet for the best private investigators in town, determined to gather ironclad evidence of Ethan's betrayal. After a few consultations, I settled on a firm with a reputation for discretion and efficiency. The investigator, a grizzled ex-cop named Frank, listened intently as I recounted my tale of woe, his weathered face betraying no emotion. When I finished, he nodded solemnly. Leave it to me, ma'am. I'll get you the proof you need. True to his word, Frank's team went to work, tailing Ethan's every move, documenting his comings and goings from the suburban home. Within a week, I had a dossier brimming with damning photographs and detailed reports of Ethan's activities. As I poured over the evidence, a sick feeling settled in the pit of my stomach. There were images of Ethan embracing Clarissa, holding her close as they shared tender kisses. Worse still, candid shots captured him doting on the young child, the very picture of a devoted father. 
How could he play this role so convincingly, lavishing affection on his secret family while neglecting his own wife and home? The depths of his deception knew no bounds. Frank's final report revealed the most gut-wrenching detail. Ethan's affair had been ongoing for over five years, predating the child's birth. He had been living this duplicitous life right under my nose, weaving an intricate tapestry of lies. Tears of rage stung my eyes as I confronted Frank. How could he do this? How could he betray me like this, year after year? The grizzled investigator's gaze softened, a hint of sympathy etched in the lines of his face. Some people are just rotten to the core, ma'am, but now you got the proof you need to make him pay. Those words rang true, fueling the fire burning within me. I would make Ethan pay all right, not just for the affairs, but for the years of deceit for robbing me of the truth I deserved. As I finalized my plans, a grim satisfaction washed over me. Soon, Ethan's carefully constructed facade would come crashing down, and the world would bear witness to his misdeeds. No more lies, no more secrets. Just the cold, harsh reality he had created for himself. With the evidence secure, I turned my attention to planning the perfect moment to confront Ethan and expose his lies. As I flipped through his calendar, one event immediately caught my eye the annual corporate award ceremony, where he was due to receive a prestigious honor for his contributions. A twisted smile crept across my face. What better way to unveil his deceit than in front of his colleagues, superiors, and esteemed guests? The humiliation would be absolute, a fitting punishment for the years of betrayal. I meticulously mapped out every detail, from coordinating with the event staff to secure a prime spot during the ceremony, to compiling a damning video montage of Ethan's dalliances. No stone would be left unturned in my quest for retribution. As the date loomed closer, I found myself struggling to maintain a facade of normalcy around Ethan. His obliviousness to my intentions only fueled my simmering rage, making it increasingly difficult to mask my disdain. You've seemed distant lately. You he remarked one evening over dinner, his brow furrowed with concern. Is everything all right? I forced a tight smile, pushing away the urge to hurl the contents of my plate at his smug face. Just stressed about the upcoming event. You know how important this is for your career. Ethan's expression softened as he reached across the table, taking my hand in his. Don't worry, darling. Once this is over, I'll make it up to you. A romantic getaway, just the two of us. The hollow promise hung in the air, a bitter reminder of the depth of his deception. He had no intention of keeping his word, not when his heart belonged to another. In those final days leading up to the ceremony, I found solace in the knowledge that soon, very soon, Ethan's world would come crashing down around him. No more lies, no more secrets, just the harsh truth he had so skillfully evaded for years. As I carefully laid out my evening attire, a sleek black dress that would command attention, a sense of grim determination washed over me. This was it the moment I had been meticulously planning for. Ethan's comeuppance was finally at hand, and nothing would stand in the way of the justice he deserved. The days leading up to the award ceremony were a tense affair. Ethan sensed my growing distance, but chalked it up to stress over the upcoming event. Little did he know, the real source of my anxiety was the impending confrontation that would lay bare his web of lies. "'You've been working yourself up into a frenzy,' he chided one evening, as I hurriedly prepared dinner. This night is supposed to be a celebration, not a cause for panic. I forced a tight smile, focusing intently on chopping vegetables to conceal the tremor in my hands. Of course, you're right. I just want everything to be perfect for your big moment. Ethan stepped behind me, his arms encircling my waist, as he nuzzled my neck. Don't worry, my dear. After this is all over, we'll take that romantic getaway we've been dreaming of. Just you and me, reconnecting like we used to. His empty promises made my stomach churn. How dare he speak of romantic retreats when he had been carrying on a years-long affair building a secret life with another woman and child? The audacity of his deception knew no bounds. In those final days, I found myself struggling to maintain a facade of normalcy around him. Every glance, every touch, only served as a reminder of the depth of his betrayal. It took every ounce of my willpower not to unleash the torrent of fury simmering beneath the surface. The night before the ceremony, as Ethan slumbered peacefully beside me, I lay awake, 
my mind racing with the intricate details of my plan. I had coordinated with the event staff, secured a prime spot during the ceremony's proceedings, and meticulously compiled a damning video montage of Ethan's indiscretions. Everything was in place, every contingency accounted for. As the first rays of dawn peeked through the curtains, I felt a sense of grim determination wash over me. This was it, the moment I had been meticulously plotting, the culmination of weeks of careful planning and agonizing anticipation. Ethan would finally face the consequences of his actions, his carefully constructed facade of lies and deceit crumbling before the eyes of his colleagues, superiors, and esteemed guests. The humiliation would be absolute, a fitting punishment for the years of betrayal he had inflicted upon me. As I slipped out of bed, I cast one final glance at my slumbering husband, a twisted smile playing across my lips. The game was nearly over, and I had every intention of emerging the victor, no matter the cost. The grand ballroom buzzed with excitement as Ethan's colleagues and esteemed guests mingled, sipping flutes of champagne and exchanging polite pleasantries. Little did they know, the evening's true spectacle was yet to unfold. As Ethan took the stage, basking in the warm glow of the spotlight, I steeled myself for the moment of reckoning. His acceptance speech droned on, each platitude and self-congratulatory remark stoking the flames of my fury. Finally, I rose from my seat, the weight of the evidence burning a hole in my clutch. All eyes turned towards me as I strode purposefully towards the podium, my heels clacking against the polished marble floor. Ethan, I announced, my voice ringing out with a steely resolve. I think it's time we address the elephant in the room. Confusion flickered across his features as I withdrew the thick manila envelope, its contents spilling out onto the stage, damning photographs and detailed reports chronicling his sordid affair. For years, you've been living a lie, carrying on a secret relationship with your colleague, Clarissa, I proclaimed, my gaze boring into his with an intensity that could melt steel. Not only have you been unfaithful, but you've also fathered a child with her, building a whole other family behind my back. A hush fell over the crowd as gasps and murmurs of disbelief rippled through the air. Ethan's face drained of color, his composure crumbling as the truth laid bare before his esteemed peers. "'Darling, please let me explain,' he began, his voice trembling with panic. But I was having none of it. With a few deaf taps on my phone, the giant screen behind us flickered to life, displaying a meticulously edited video montage of Ethan's indiscretions, tender embraces shared with Clarissa— doting moments with the young child, a sordid tapestry of lies and betrayal. No more explanations, Ethan. I spat, my voice dripping with venom. Your actions have spoken loud enough for far too long. As the video played out, the ballroom descended into chaos. Ethan's colleagues recoiled in horror, their shocked expressions a testament to the depths of his deception. In the midst of the tumult, I caught a glimpse of Clarissa, her face ashen, panicked in her delicate features, Ethan lunged towards me, his desperation palpable. Magnolia, please, I never meant to hurt you. I recoiled from his touch, my fury reaching a boiling point. Savior, please, you wretched liar. You made your choices, and now it's time to face the consequences. With those words, I turned on my heel and strode out of the ballroom, leaving a trail of shocked whispers and shattered reputations in my wake. The once revered Ethan Jeffries had been laid bare, his carefully cultivated image crumbling under the weight of his own misdeeds. As the cool night air caressed my flushed cheeks, a twisted sense of satisfaction washed over me. Justice had been served, and Ethan had received the public humiliation he so richly deserved. The game was over, and I had emerged the victor, his world reduced to ashes by the flames of his own deceit. In the days that followed, the fallout from my public revelation rippled through Ethan's once pristine world, like a shockwave. His prestigious corporate position, the one he had sacrificed so much for, now hung in the balance as the board of directors scrambled to contain the scandal. How could you do this to us, to the company? His boss, Marcus, demanded during an emergency meeting. The media circus is a PR nightmare. We may have to let you go to save face. Ethan's normally composed demeanor cracked, desperation seeping into his voice. Please, give me a chance to explain. What you saw, it wasn't the whole story. As but Marcus wasn't having any of it. Save your excuses, Jeffries. You brought this on yourself with your reckless behavior. 
we have stakeholders, investors to answer to. As Ethan's professional life crumbled around him, the personal toll of his actions also came to a head. Clarissa, the very woman he had risked everything for, showed up unannounced at his office, her delicate features twisted with fury. You lied to me, she spat, her voice trembling with rage. All this time, you said you were getting divorced, that we could finally be together openly. Ethan reached out, his expression pleading. Clarissa, please, I never meant to hurt you. I love you and our child. We can make this work, I swear. But Clarissa recoiled from his touch, her eyes brimming with tears of betrayal. Save it, Ethan. I can't keep living this lie being the other woman. It's over. With those words, she turned and stormed out, leaving Ethan to face the wreckage of his once meticulously constructed double life. In the aftermath, I couldn't help but feel a twisted sense of satisfaction as I watched Ethan's world unravel thread by thread. The man who had so callously deceived me, who had built an entire secret family behind my back, was finally reaping the consequences of his actions. Yet, even as he pleaded for my forgiveness, offering empty promises of change and reconciliation, I remained resolute. The trust had been shattered beyond repair, the bond we once shared irreparably severed by his web of lies. I'm filing for divorce, I stated matter-of-factly, my voice betraying no hint of emotion. And I want full financial transparency, every asset, every account laid bare. Ethan's eyes widened in panic, the reality of my demands sinking in. But Magnolia, please, think of what we've built together, our life. I leveled him with a steely gaze, my resolve unwavering. You already made that choice when you decided to betray me, year after year. Now it's time to face the consequences. As I turned and walked away, leaving him to grapple with the ruins of his once charmed existence, I couldn't help but feel a sense of grim satisfaction. The game was over and I had emerged the victor, having stripped Ethan of everything he had so carefully cultivated through his web of deception. Justice, it seemed, had finally been served, and the scales of karma had been balanced, all through the sheer force of my determination and unwillingness to be the victim any longer. The divorce proceedings were a brutal affair, made even more contentious by Ethan's desperate attempts to cling to some semblance of the life he had so carelessly squandered. Time and again, he pleaded for a second chance, offering hollow promises of change and devotion. Magnolia, please, I'm begging you to reconsider, he implored during one particularly heated meeting with our attorneys. What we had was special, real. Don't throw it all away because of my momentary lapse in judgment. I leveled him with a withering gaze, my resolve strengthened by the years of deception he had put me through. A momentary lapse? You carried on an affair for half a decade, building an entire secret life behind my back. There's no coming back from that level of betrayal. As the negotiations dragged on, I remained steadfast in my demands. Full financial transparency and a significant portion of our joint assets. Ethan balked at the terms, desperately clinging to the lavish lifestyle his corporate success had afforded him. You're being unreasonable, he protested, his voice tinged with desperation. After everything I've done for this family, for us, you can't take that all away from me. But I was unmoved, my anger fueled by the years of lies and deceit he had subjected me to. I'm taking what's rightfully mine, Ethan. You forfeited any claim to our shared assets the moment you decided to betray my trust and start another family. In the end, I emerged victorious, securing a substantial settlement that would ensure my financial independence for years to come. As I watched Ethan slink away, his once confident demeanor deflated, I felt a profound sense of relief wash over me. The chains of our fractured marriage had finally been severed, liberating me from the weight of his deception. For the first time in years, I could breathe freely, unencumbered by the burden of his lies. In the months that followed, I found solace in the simple joys that had eluded me for so long. Reconnecting with old friends, pursuing long-neglected hobbies, and reveling in the newfound freedom that came with reclaiming my life. Ethan, meanwhile, retreated into a self-imposed exile, his once-promising corporate career in tatters, and his personal life a shambles. The last I heard, he had relocated to a quiet suburb, his tail tucked firmly between his legs, a mere shadow of the confident, charismatic man he had once been. As for Clarissa and the child they shared, they too had disappeared, 
their ties to Ethan severed in the wake of his ultimate downfall. In the end, his selfish pursuit of dual lives had cost him everything, his career, his family, and any shred of respect he might have once commanded. And through it all, I stood tall, unbowed by the tumultuous journey that had brought me to this point. The fire that had once burned within me, the all-consuming desire for vengeance, had given way to a newfound sense of empowerment and self-assurance. I was no longer the meek, trusting wife who had so easily been deceived. No, I was a woman, reborn, forged in the crucible of Ethan's betrayal, tempered by the flames of my own determination and unwavering pursuit of justice. As I looked to the future, a world of possibilities stretched out before me, unburdened by the weight of a broken marriage or the specter of deception. I was free, truly free, to chart my own course and embrace the life that had once been denied to me. And in that moment, I knew that no matter the trials or tribulations that lay ahead, I would face them head-on, emboldened by the knowledge that I had emerged victorious from the ultimate test of my resolve. For in the end, the scales of karma had been balanced, and justice, sweet, merciless justice, had been served.